Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah. April 7. Wait. 2023. You said Monday. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, no. What a weird thing. Friday weird turned belt. into Monday. <laughs> Friday is the new Monday. At you, least should know, you should know <laughs> your current locus. <laughs> your current locus. I love it. Friggin' locus. You, you know what know I don't it. like about locus? What do you not like about it? Because it's not thematic, but it's definitely intended to be thematic. Yeah. You don't like the thematics. I don't like the thematics. You don't like the thematics, folks. Tomorrow's uh, gonna be boils, uh, you, folks. You guys lost me. Doesn't, I heard. Doesn't like the thematics. And thematic and yeah, uh, we can't say more for oh, reasons don't... that we can explain tomorrow, oh. and that you have explained in group text. I think that's the only place he hasn't explained it. Actually, I don't, I don't know. There's a group text that you used to participate in, and now. Oh God damn it! Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. There no, we go. No, I. Uh... Okay. Yeah. I mean, I no longer have access to that game. You don't have access? Yeah, because every time I log in, it says, you did great today. Oh, because you don't, because, because you log in on your own account uh, and there's somebody else that's it, using your it, account. It used to be that both of us could log in and both of us could use the same account and it would know the difference between the two of us. And then one day, it changed every single day. Yeah. And so at that point, I'm like, well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> gotcha. A UI UI issue. So yeah, some some kind of behind the yeah. scenes switcheroo of like too many people are using one. Too account. many, too many too D's many, on the dance floor. Yes. Too many D's. I mean I don't know, there are other options other, other than saying that it killed you. <laughs> you can't ever play Bryce, it. Bryce, are you gonna really run uphill on this one? Like you know you know when there's a thing that defies Brian, it doesn't matter whether logically it could it's a personal affront, and he will have none of it. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it was time anyway. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. I mean, uh, it has if, been dwindling. If if I truly cared, then it seems like I would have done. I would have probably stopped if we weren't the fact that I do it with Ashley. Yeah. Mm. Now it actually makes sense that we should probably explain what we're talking about, but we won't because we want to protect it. All right, here we go. Let's do the show. All right, Andrew, you ready to do a show? I'm ready. Okay, then I'll count you in for the it's weird things. Jeff! What? Oh, I'll count you in for the weird things program in. Three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, hoy. And Bryce, the animal, Castillo. Hello. <laughs> it's me. Remember, remember the show Manimal? The animal. Remember Manimal? Oh yeah. Uh-uh. Uh well, uh what's the elevator pitch on Manimal? Uh, Manimal. It's a man that yeah. Manimal turns into an animal. I feel like I feel like, like the, 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 the Yeah, I thought there was maybe more to it. It's exactly what you no, think it is. No, the, the, <laughs> the title of the program is the elevator pitch. Well, that sounds I got it for you. Got it. Manimal. <laughs> is oh, it what I think it is? Oh. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I I have a similarly complicated pitch. It's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm. You'll never guess what it's about. The movie? But the no. no. The manimal. <laughs> the the manimal. Uh, the manimal. The, the if you can find it on YouTube, just to play it, Bryce, because I want you to see it, because it is it's eighties. It is literally. Uh, you do a few rails of cocaine, you spit out an idea, and a week later, they're off a lot shooting it. It's it's kind of, uh, it, it feels to me in the same uh, oeuvre as uh, 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 Misfits of Science or something. Mm, so we're looking at every transformation in Manimal from 1983. Yeah. Whoa, okay, that's that's some pretty... Yeah, fade, fade, fade. Yeah, you got to see the fade on that for sure. <laughs> show picture of a taxidermy. <laughs> This is amazing. Yeah. The, the the intro, if you could find the intro credits, it's like, so it's about a dude who, I don't know, Africa magic, something, something, spirits. Now he can transform to any animal he needs to when he has to solve a crime, which is just. How many animals? <laughs> is it, it depends oh my on God. the crime. Like he might need to become an amoeba to find out if it was another brain amoeba yeah. that killed the guy. <laughs> How do we get up onto the next floor? I'll turn into a chimp. Oh, the bank robbers are coming this way. Lion time. Lion time. 
that's that's kind of lame. That's a little lame. Uh, I don't know. Hold on. I mean, oh, or Christ. how dare like, you? All right. I'm sorry. Bryce, you got to understand. Two things were really, really, really well, popular the in M. the 80s, okay? Mm-hmm. Number one, the Incredible Hulk. Yep. A man who turned into another thing. Number two, whenever the monkey peed on Johnny Carson when Jack Hanna was on The Tonight Show. These two <laughs> things combined to create Manimal. Like, you got to have a, an Incredible Hulk episode, but instead of the Incredible Hulk, it was the monkey that peed on Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. What, uh, did, did he maintain a secret identity in this one, or was he constantly on the run? Oh, no, that was a theme, because that was, that was like the Incredible Hulk, everything like that. Every Knight Rider was constantly on the run. Uh... Uh, per Wikipedia, he uses this ability yeah. to help the police solve crimes. Ah, so oh, probably so he's, a secret he's identity. He's probably like a lawyer by yeah, day. So, yeah, exactly. It's either your, it's the fugitive plus whatever. Yeah, you, right. You're the Hulk, fugitive plus your manimal, or your super successful the magician who helps out the cops or yeah. you're the professor of some obscure thing that helps out the cops. Yeah, or you're a novelist who just everybody seems to get murdered all around you. Uh, by the way, speaking <laughs> yeah. of, of uh, professors, the latest and I think final trailer of the Indiana Jones movie came out today. I have not seen it. Shall I? Dare I say it's, I don't know. I think it might look kind of good. Well, I mean, oh. it, uh, I mean, it's indie. Uh, uh, how did this, the Beatles song go? Uh, it's got you. Got to admit, it's getting better. Can't get no worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say that that the age down, the 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 uh, the, the de aging. Yeah, yeah. The CGI on the on the de aging is like good. Yeah. Like it is. It is not passable. It's not. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, look at that. It's like good. Which what, what I, I, gonna- I, I, if this is just the first movie where they get that right with a big star and a big character, then like that'll just be worth they, the I, price of admission. I feel like the last time they showed off a clip or something, they showed a lot of the aged down Harrison Ford. Right. Um, but they were also quick to say like, it's just the beginning of the movie. It's not like a whole thing, which makes me think that they're really pumping that footage into these trailers. So everyone knows, ah, they made him look younger. Yeah. I mean, and that's fine. Uh, uh, I do wonder, like, who watched Fleabag and was like, oh, yeah, she's the new Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, we should put her in a bunch of action movies and we should have her write James Bond. And we should, like, I, I, I just don't, and I love Fleabag. I didn't but, see uh, it. But I, I, I just, I don't know, I don't know where, where that connection comes from. Yeah, she's great at a certain kinds of characters. Yeah. So seeing her in this, it's going to be interesting to see because it's not, it was a very unconventional choice, I would say. I, I mean, it was I would agree. like she's a very great actress and very good at what she does and super popular. Like put her here, but I'm like, ah, this is a, a different, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Cause she like, is like, like Fle- Fleabag was actress. great because it was a great, it was a one woman show that they successfully adapted and made into a, into a, a, a program. And it's got a lot of straight to the camera, talking to the audience stuff like you would have in a one woman show. That's not the kind of thing that I'm like, oh yes. And that means that she is going to be amazing at writing action. I'm, I'm super curious because like, I love Ricky Gervais. Yep. And then if you said, and Ricky Gervais is going to be in this, I'd be, oh, what? really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I, really? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to a very different style. Though I'll from say, there, but. Simon Pegg made that jump a little bit with the Mission Impossible movies. Well, and uh, on top of that, smaller role, e- e- but even yeah. Bruce Willis. And and uh, to be honest, like I had never seen any action, anything from what's his name, the transporter, uh, uh, Jason Statham. Yeah, yeah, uh, he was kind of like a a doughy beleaguered person in Snatch, and then suddenly he was the transporter. <laughs> mm. Well, but he always yeah, he was, but think- he was always the rough and tumble guy. Uh, not, not, not in snatch. He wasn't. That yes, was, he was. Uh, no, he, uh, when, when did he get into a action sequence fight? But no, but his, his, he was, as they say over there across the pond, the hard man. <laughs> like he was, he was the, like, like he was the fisticuffs. He was the brawler. Well, I don't know. I, 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 uh, maybe I, I need to rewatch snatch, but I always remember him as being the beleaguered, confused. Why is everyone dumb? But me guy. Hmm. Yes, but he was oh. also a member of organized crime who talks like this. So, like, he's always going to be, you know, intimidating. I'll give you, I'll Correct. give you, oh, I'll give ahead. you a bigger transition. Yeah. Do you remember watching Alias? Yes. 
Okay, Jennifer Garner had her boyfriend, and yep. there was this other guy who was kind of a handsome dude, but yep. was like the friend who was totally friend zoned and treated kind of like just the the nerdy, likable kind of guy who then became Bradley Cooper. Yep. Oh wow. And you go, yeah, he was he was the yeah. you know he was reoccurring, but he was never like the leading man on that show. And you gotta go now, like. Hey, move the camera foot over, people. We think we found the other star. I think we found Rocket uh, Raccoon. Another one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my my favorite too of the biggest transformation was remember remember uh, the original Manhunter uh, by Michael Mann. Yes, <laughs> but uh, yep. we got a script for you. <laughs> it's called Manhunter. <laughs> Aha! I like it. It's been um, looking for you but, all uh, day. They, yeah, there's a there was the tabloid journalist who was this very pathetic doughy kind of guy who something bad happens to him because you know it's a Hannibal Lecter movie and he's just a sort of pathetic like ta- there's totally a tabloid sort of slobby kind of like nerdy sort of you know weaselly journalist I give you Stephen Lang aka uh Mr. Macho Marine from Avatar oh my god oh, yeah. wow oh okay Go look, type in Stephen Lang and Manhunter, and you see, you're like, how is this the same person? And it's like, you know, the Equinox or whoever made that happen. Uh, you just see it, type in like, you know, Manhunter and Stephen Lang and look for, yeah, Freddie Lowndes, look for an image of him, and you'll see, like, and you go, like, wow. Although, also, like, uh, I mean, isn't uh, Hannibal Lecter Brian Cox in that movie? He is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hannibal Lecter, spelled with a K, but yes. Yeah, yeah but he's a. Uh... I would like there to say his name is. Like, uh, it's just. Yeah. Yep, there he is. Mm-hmm. I'd like <laughs> to think, say his famous you think catchphrase. The dude, from Stephen Lang today would take that. I don't think you can. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I got an interesting thing I want to share with you. Is, Please. Uh, I've been working on uh, my latest book, and I needed to. I'm like, oh, man, I need to do some research on some Florida lore. And I found like a podcast that may have mentioned something, but it was a 30 minute podcast. And I'm in a hurry and I can't listen to the 30 minute podcast. So I just downloaded the MP3 and I dropped it into a program that uses the Whisper, which is the OpenAI uh, speech to text program. So there's a thing called Mac Whisper, which is somebody built a really nice wrapper for it. I drop that in there, click search. You know, it could find what I was looking for. Like it took me like a couple of minutes and I was able to do that. I'm like, wow, that's oh my God. kind of like, I didn't think like, oh, I'm going to go use the thing I'm using. But I just dropped that MP3 in there, was able to search it like, you know, pretty quickly as it transcribed it. And then right before the show, I opened up Skype and did Bryce, did you all see what's popped up in there? Uh, uh, popped up in, in Skype. In Skype chat. Oh, yeah. Is there something in did you Skype get Bing? chat? I had Bing. There's a Bing option. Yeah, I got Skype. Yeah, being powered by the OpenAI system is inside of there. And and not it's not a hey, plug for OpenAI. But it's a plug Wait, for uh, so, so these how, AI. How's it integrated? Uh, it is now just added to your friends list, so you can just oh, gonna, utilize you just Bing to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, via uh, Skype. You you sent me a link. I didn't try it, but there's a phone number that you could call. Is that is that? Yeah. What what, what is that? Call Samantha is the name of it, and I don't know in what standing it is with uh, <laughs> with OpenAI, but it is certainly using ChatGPT uh, to. It's just a voice version of Chat GPT, and we we used it uh, on the bones with Bryce. And uh, oh. you can just have a casual conversation. I asked it to be Bart Simpson, and it told me to not have a cow. And uh, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it uses a very flat tone of voice. It obviously is yeah. going for a her uh, a kind of aesthetic down to the name, which is the name of the AI in in her oh, Samantha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't uh, pick up on that. It's, but yeah, it is it's yeah. interesting. Once this has like a non monotone voice, um, then uh, it'll be. You want to call Sam? I, I don't know. I I, 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 unless, unless Andrew is smiling and nodding, oh. I, I, I do not want to do anything. Okay. In fact, I oh, yeah. No, I don't, I don't have a problem. I, I, yeah, I, I, and I think I want to say too is I wasn't trying to just like plug what we're doing. Like a lot of stuff, everybody, you're going to see the stuff, everybody, not just OpenAI or Microsoft stuff everywhere. You're going to see. AI put into tools, put into stuff, sometimes crammed in there in ways maybe it shouldn't be, but sometimes ways it's really good. So we, we, we were joking about this on Daily like, Tech News Show yesterday that next year's CES is just going to be the most ridiculous uses of AI. And I don't mean good. I mean, just yeah. like, mm-hmm. like an AI enabled toaster 
your refrigerator will tell you your oh my so, so many, many refrigerators with AI uh, uh, mm-hmm. will be will be will be there. Your laundry machine will generate a new jingle when AI, the music when the AI clothespins. Uh, yeah. uh, they are they are going to be all over okay. CES next January. Maybe they speak and the little mouth the, the clip opens when it speaks. Hello, said I, said I. <laughs> <laughs> and it just drops your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the fact that if you take them as their sum total. Uh, the industry writ large is convinced uh, that you know what humans want all of their appliances to needle them at all times and beg for their attention. Yeah. It's very Flintstonesy, right? You, <laughs> everything's Just, alive. Uh, you know what? Here's an algorithm. Just say it's a living. <laughs> That's all you have to do. TV volume up. <laughs> TV yeah. volume I would up. Say th- I, I would say though that there is a place to basically put in. You take all the docs, documentation, stuff like that, and you can now use what we call embedding search in one of these language models. You could build a very good chat GPT help bot that would just make it super simple. Like if you just said, hey, because you think about every stupid question you get or every good question you get in your inbox, you can now put that and your answer into a file, have a, a, a thing that finds the top best ranks and has a chat bot give the answer. So I do think there will be useful places where we'll see this in devices and stuff where I just scan a QR oh, code yeah. on my thing. and But there is going to be like, yeah, all the other. No, no, yeah. I mean, stuff. CES is not known for its, uh, 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 it is known for its big breakthroughs and it is known for it's things the next failures. year that yeah. include the big breakthroughs in very, very uh, uh, stapled on ways because <laughs> they're there to sell up commodity product um uh i i, I know that we all want to uh, uh keep on going past the subject of ai but there was one headline that i just like i did not read the article so for all i know it's justified or whatever but the headline was these are the jobs that ai are going to cost including 100 million in america alone and i thought to myself there are what 380 million americans yeah. and I am not certain that a hundred million Americans are employed. <laughs> like, well, okay, so well, around it, the world, yeah, so. it is three hundred million jobs well, can yeah, be affected America. by the latest wave of AI. Okay, so uh, the headline say. definitely said eliminated uh, because you know well, whatever they probably launch with one title and then change it. That's you know that's uh-huh. not unusual with like YouTube videos and stuff. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, hysteria. Yeah, I, I. You know, I, people are asking questions, and that's good. I think that's people asking questions good. I think people could, you know, listening's good too. Listening's good too, and and listening to give you multiple points of view and to figure this out because we don't know. I mean, it's just hard to say. I mean, imagine you, know, you just imagine a world where just work is easier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're we're not exactly at a point where every job can whole cloth be replaced. Um, but now you have people who can be AI technicians, AI operators, AI interfacers, coordinators, any number of things that uh, are new facets created by yeah. And there's the technical there's a, a, yeah, and, and there's a lot of stuff. There's more work to get done than there are people to do the work. And there's a lot of work we don't want to do. And there's a lot of things that we can't afford to do that's worthwhile doing. You know, like creating podcast descriptions. Like after every episode, you got to sit down and write down, here's a summary. This is what we talked about. This is what it does. Bryce, are you- and It are can you take ter- 20 or 30. Uh, yeah. Are, are you terribly sad that that's 20 or 30 minutes of work that you don't have to do anymore that becomes considerably easier? Not really, because I don't do a lot of show notes. I don't do a lot of show notes because- It, it sucks. It, it kind of sucks, and we yeah. are usually pretty free form, so it's a lot of- But like, I, I, what's it called? Uh, Bryce came over yesterday for the bones and that was literally what I was doing for We're Not Wrong. I was just taking our show in chat GPT. And I was, I was just in chat GPT and I'm like, summarize this. And then it was like, it was too long. And I'm like, shorter. <laughs> like, uh, uh, start with on this episode in of hand. We're Not Wrong. Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. It just got it exactly where I wanted it. It was uh, three tight paragraphs that explain the, explain the show. Boom. Well, and, uh, That's the be- it. The the best part is, and again, I'm not trying to make this a plug again, but but like uh, now that thread is remembered, so you could just go find that thread and then say like, remember that thing we did? Do it with this. Do it again. Yep. Same rules. I do that with um. I've done that with little things like uh, if I have a comma separated list of names, or no, if I uh, no, if I've got a a, 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 a a each name is on a different line, I can tell Jot GPT, hey, take this list and comma separate it or just format it, right? It's something that is like time intensive if you don't have a little thing to do it. But if you have a little thing to do it, then it just takes boop, 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 boop. 
How did that go again? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> See. That's, and that's, I think, a lot of, <laughs> we often think about technology at the leading edge, but when you start to think about, I, I've had, I've been, need to have some work around my house done, and so I go get a couple different contractors, each one of them to give me a bid and send it in, and then I decide who do I want to go with. Some of these are mom and pop operations, and so they'll come in, and I won't see their bid for a week later. And in that time, I may have hired somebody else. And it took them a week because that person's busy out doing jobs and doesn't have the time to sit down and write up these bids. They save them for you know, all at one point or whatever. With AI, with systems like this, as you say, oh, that person becomes that much more efficient now. And it may not change the net number of people in my area that do those services, but it might free up time for them because they're being more efficient at this. They're all of a sudden that I'm going to pay the same for this job no matter what, but that person's going to have his Friday free or whatever. And so that's one of the things I think that, you know, one of the things that's really interesting to look at is all those little incremental things like Justin and I with our business and we had to work on invoicing. We had to do all these other little things. And you look at how much time gets caught up in that. And then when all that gets, and it's not like, well, we freed that up. Sorry, Andrew, you're fired. Or sorry, yeah. Justin, you're fired. It's like there was bigger, better things for us to do. Well, especially also because there are so many services I pay for and so many contractors that I neither know how long they take to do the job, nor do I care. I just know that within the budget, this is the job and it shows up done on time. Yeah. So uh, if all of them are suddenly granted more free hours, great. Uh, that that uh, until further notice that affects me not at all yeah. that that you add more yep. time there there's um uh it, it reminds me a little bit um uh, we talked about it 10 years ago but there's a book called uh, the Walmart effect back when we were all terrified of Walmart um and it pointed out that uh functionally based on objective standard of living things uh it's easy to see the reduced wages the pressuring out of mom and pop shops and all that stuff but what's hard to see is the raising of the standard of living where objectively more people are living in more comfort by basically all of humanity got a $10,000 raise yeah. thanks to Walmart saying, asking questions like, and granted they were doing it for uh, selfish purposes of we would like to spend less on your de deodorant. Can we cart, can we save a nickel per deodorant? Why, why does deodorant come in a box? And then they're like, well, I don't know. That's just how we did it. And they're like, what if you didn't? Can we help? And then now deodorant does not come in a box, and that's boxes uh, on boxes that aren't being just thrown away in landfills yeah. now. Of course, that was done like in the Walmart mafia style. Of, I, look, it I, would I, be I, 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 it would be it'd be a real <laughs> shame if these boxes kept showing up. And uh, you saying we can give a raise, but we don't gotta pay more? Oh uh, no! Yeah, so I mean, but but like you know what's funny is like I was thinking about that. Right before I left Oakland, I was like, uh, I was like, man, the mafia's hilarious. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I was thinking about Walmart and I was like, are we at a point now where if they built a Walmart in downtown Oakland, if it would be cheered because it wouldn't be. And at that time, Amazon was was the big bad where it was like, oh, Amazon's even worse than Walmart because it, like people don't even get to work like in in in, in, a, in an Amazon that, thing. Uh, 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 quick side jack, but that was also part of the Walmart hysteria is everyone's like, I just can't in imagine anything taking this down. Oh, there's no way. And then, of course, Amazon does, which is the same thing. They thought about the Sears Roebuck catalog back in the 1920s and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Though, I mean, uh, you look at where where say Sears or any number of mall department stores are is they're they're kind of <laughs> they're they're ruins they're I, yeah they're I believe, empty I husks. Sears went away a decade ago. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, uh, is is two big bads better than one? Uh. Well, well I, who's I, bad? Well, who's bad? Who's bad? I mean, uh, uh, who's uh, bad? Uh. Maybe I, Sears I, is I, Sears is still around. I'm gonna say I walked into one. Oh. And it was a strange experience because, like, they had the they hired the interior designer who does like you know Spirit Halloween, you know, where they take a big thing and shrink shrink it down into some smaller space. Trashier, trashier, <laughs> more open well, space that's like, unused. There, yeah, there was like an IKEA by me that turned into a Spirit of Halloween, and, and like an idiot for like a half a second at least, I'm like, oh my god, a huge Halloween store! How? And then I'm like. No, that's there. It's not like an IKEA full of Halloween. So they just like courting off like ten percent of the store to the make very it. But front anyway, of there it. was a yeah. There's a Sears I walked into there. I think it was Sears or JCPenney, one of the others. But I walk in there 
and there's uh it's they've shrunk it down to like 20 percent of the space and i was just trying to find like a dress shirt or something oh, wow. and i go into the men's department and i swear to you all they had was like dark maroon colored collared shirts <laughs> like mm-hmm. it was just it was just like it was like they got the offs of some overruns. It was just, I'm walking around. I could not find like a white shirt, could not find a single white shirt. And it felt weird. It felt like I walked into one of those, like, you know, like those prank shows where they make like the yeah. fake yeah, restaurants. Yeah, yeah, pop up fake store or whatever. Yeah. 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 I felt like I walked into that. A lot of I'm weird like, mirrors this... in here. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, 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 just, to, just to clarify my point, I'm not in the business of picking who is and isn't a bad guy, but I am in the business of trying to recognize universal trends. And it seems yeah. like for 150 years, we're always convinced that the new thing is a threat because it's, it, it's going to be a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was. Yeah, yeah. Walmart, take the good with the bad. Wal- sure. Walmart ate both. up the regional yeah, yeah. five and dime. Mm-hmm. The regional five and dime gave up the mom and pop. And then Amazon's come along to eat Walmart. And Barnes and Noble, that was eaten at the bomb and pop shop. And then Amazon yep. ate that. But then the it's borders, like, yeah. where there, there's going to be something else. Yeah. I am, yeah, old enough to remember when uh, Barnes and Noble's was uh, one of the most evil companies on the planet, according to some people, because they were ruthlessly murdering the mom and pop bookstores, which were the cornerstone of all society. Yeah. Rip, rip borders, rip to the borders. And now people love them. People are like, I wish I had a bar with bubbles near me. Yep. You know, they don't even have, you know, it's not a real Starbucks. It's just a coffee shop. It's Starbucks stuff. (laughs) Hey man, before, before we get replaced by a new podcast, that's made by a mega corporation called strange objects. Let's say everybody support the weird things podcast. Oh, how do they, how do they do that? Well, I mean, they, uh, I don't know. There's a website for that. The website is called patreon.com. More specifically, the website is called patreon.com slash weird things because <laughs> it is at patreon.com slash weird things that you can support this program with your hard earned money. But we're going to give you something for it. Yeah. We're going to give you the after things episode early, earlier than anyone gets it. Anyone on the planet, Brian, if you're not paying money, you don't get it as fast as the people that are. That are that are, that are chopping up that doche. I don't know. Uh, last time I checked, Bryce isn't paying a single dime, and yet he's getting it faster. Oh, than even Bryce, and Bryce no, is getting do, paid. Brian, yeah, <laughs> we, we. I was paying for this show. Actually, I do pay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I pay for. I pay oh, for these shows. He's fired oh, up. Okay, I pay right, for these right, shows so that I can I see too. it in my RSS feed to make sure that they do come in time. Fair enough. I pay too. I pay too. To be honest, uh, you let's got, all raise our hands if we pay for this show. Yeah, you you guys. The lies count. <laughs> yes, they do count. Literally yesterday, Justin and Bryce did a bonus podcast for another podcast that we do, and I couldn't access it because I couldn't support <laughs> my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. No, the, the phone call I got this morning was, uh, uh, hey, how'd the show go? And I was like, oh, great. He's like, I can't listen to it. <laughs> Why? Because I... I don't know the password. <laughs> and then there's just this pregnant pause that I can only imagine that you would physically represent as like a child reaching up with his hands, just grabbing, <laughs> just waiting. That's Brian just saying like, would you like please? to give me the password <laughs> right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll never know. Never I know. know. I didn't give it to him. What we may know, <laughs> uh, Brian, I want to ask know, you something. Uh, last pass. Brian, uh, you ready? You wanna? There was a bet that may have been made on this show. Hey! Oh my god! Hey. And and one person took one side just in the spirit of providing, you know, another side to yep. the bet. Brian, do we want to go double or nothing that we see Starship this launch year? this month? Oh, oh. This hold on, hold on, very much. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reset the original. The bet. original bet was uh, around this time last year. We were wagering on not only whether or not uh, 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 Starship was going to launch, but but. Uh, Andrew made the bold claim that not only would it launch, it would. No, launch. I did not make the bold claim. You, you said, <laughs> "How about twice?" And I'm trying to be like, "Okay, sure." Okay, uh, yeah, that does sound like me. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, oh man, Starship. Uh, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And what were the stakes of the bet? 
Oh, uh, five hundred dollars to the charity of the other person's choosing, and and a pie to the face, and a pie to the face. Which was so we all Justin's know. Contribution. We all, we all know. <laughs> I am a problem solver. Uh, we all know that it did not launch once, let alone twice. And so now Andrew is on the hook to pay five hundred dollars to a charity and get a totally pie in the face. That. Totally fine with that. All right. So five hundred dollars, Brian. That is five hundred dollars to a, a worthy cause that okay. is now in your hands. Okay. You have it in your hands right oh, now. And I guess the nature of double or nothing is that uh, and two the pies. Worst thing I'm only is, doubling is down on the two to, pies. You know what? Double or nothing <laughs> sounds pretty good. So wait a minute. Up. So you are not saying that you would. Donate a thousand dollars to a worthy cause. I, I, no, I believe that's what what double or nothing. No, he sure. just said. I'll donate. I'll, okay, because because he do, just I'll, said he I'll, just I'll, wanted two pies. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but now he is saying I'll, that he will that he will donate a thousand dollars. Uh, uh. So or uh, I'm off the hook. Let's just uh. Oh, or no, he's off the hook. Uh, Andrew, two pies and a thousand dollars. If what doesn't happen, what are you saying will happen? Starship takes off and reaches space this month. D does it land safely? No, it's not going to, not wouldn't be landing safely. It'd be landing in the, in the Hawaii, in, in like the, in the ocean. Hawaii. All right. So you are saying in the month of April, which has already begun at the point that we're recording this, it is April 7th. You know what? I, I, I love charity so much and I love <laughs> pies to the face so much that I'm willing to accept this double or nothing challenge. All right. Uh, so we are saying midnight at the end of April, the uh, midnight yep. leading into the first uh, uh, day uh, of uh, May. You, do we want to say Greenwich Mean Time just so that there's no dispute? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Keep an gonna, eye out. It's going to be like midway, but before the stratosphere, uh, right at midnight. <laughs> now, is there something new with Starship that's that's caused you to double or nothing this, Andrew? Uh. Are we accepting this? I'm just asking. Uh, I accept. I accept. Double or nothing. Because it's on the stand, and they've, they're they doing a test like in two days. And if that works, they plan to launch within a week. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. They've said this before, though, haven't they? I mean, they? I was about to say. Uh, if <laughs> no, this... never got this close. Never got this close before. Okay. Uh, we'll see. Because <laughs> uh, this would be I... a real fumble for I... you. Okay, you, could, you could add $500 and Andrew Maine, who is now... Like a name. Oh yeah. Before he was just an author that we knew. <laughs> yeah. Before. Now he, this is something that might make tech news. Oh yeah. Oh, like yeah. like if he no, just gets no, no, a pie no. to the face. Well, I mean, look, uh, uh look, uh, uh, you're I, giving that up. Uh, yes. For I the am. chance at two pies. Dot yes. exe. Yes, two pies. Dot exe. <laughs> Especially because uh, SpaceX is number one a giant end boss of the video game of getting to space. However. It has a fairly large red blinking light called deadlines, <laughs> uh, and so I feel like uh, I, uh, I feel like that's their one weakness or their biggest weakness, and so I'm I'm okay with this. I'm okay with it. We'll see. Everybody, somebody wins something either way. That's right. Wait, hold on. Who wins? Who wins if you win? Well, this aside is, from you, uh, well, he, I, I, he wins I win. his dignity. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't. Is. Brian doesn't win anything. The audience doesn't win anything. The uh, audience but, doesn't, but doesn't get I, doesn't get I two win. pies. Doesn't get a pie wins. in the face. Yeah, somebody <laughs> wins. His, I'll take one of these pies. Yeah, but that's yeah. every How about bet. That? I'll take one of the pies. <laughs> Wait, all right, hold on. So Fill now, in the gap. I'll take one of those pies. So let's say, if Andrew wins. Bryce, you are volunteering as pie tribute. I'll take a pie. You will oh take a pie to the face. I can't oh. I can't contribute to charity, but I will take a pie. Just let it be known. Bryce hates okay. charity. <laughs> but he will take a let pie to the face. Brian hates progress and is probably going to be writing letters to the FAA <laughs> telling them they need to slow down progress in space. April 30th. Uh, I'll, I'll April 30th is letters. our a a open six letter. month moratorium on going to space. We can't do any more space <laughs> higher than like a like a Falcon Heavy. We can't. I do am it calling anymore. for a full and complete stop of space until our elected <laughs> officials can determine what's going on. It's just nobody knows what's out there. Uh, all right. So April 30th, which is a Sunday, okay. is the deadline on this. And, Sp and Starship not only has to launch... It has to get to space. What are we defining as space? Is that the Carmen line? Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, Carmen line. It will have to pass 
the Carmen line right. for this to be a official bet. So in other words, bet. not that is not, the, not blow up on on launch. Do not and not get a little bit and then like like mm -hmm. no no like it has to get to the Carmen line and that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doesn't have to land. Although at that point, you know what? Mm. Never mind. Well, no, oh. it's not even going to try to. Land. Talk, he's about yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah, the no, game. No, 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 no right. it's just going to hit the ocean. Wouldn't that be a great fake out though? <laughs> if they were like psych and it just started doing loop to loops and, and, then, and it landed in front of the Capitol. <laughs> just lands in uh, 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 the center of Times Square and blocks all Substack links. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, very funny. Yeah. So there we go. We've got a bet, everybody. Mark your calendars. Set it on your timelines. Let the press know. Alert the uh, press. I, I only just Not saw the, the Substack thing this morning. Uh, is it really as transparent as it looks? I have no idea. Okay. And, the, and I mean, does anyone know any uh, yeah. how transparent is Twitter to be? Because also, yeah. it's like, here's one thing that I trust less than Twitter, coverage of Twitter. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I have, I have no idea what the hell is happening. Uh, who knows whether nobody can know whether it will last for more than five seconds. So a oh, uh, quick contingency, just to, just to, uh, uh, uh -oh. is, is it, is it bets off if they do something sneaky? Like, well, we decided last minute to not attach the, you know, the capsule on top and it's just the base or something for starship. Yeah. Is it, like what if they make There's, changes to no, no 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 it just gotta be the engine the engine the engine goes up the start the, the yeah. upper stage starship yeah. goes into orbit yeah. not orbit just goes into space not orbit just yeah, goes okay. goes okay. with the carbon line yeah. yeah what do you have to lose <laughs> the opportunity uh, to see you hit you know, no he's he's the, the one most who has precious to, of yeah. things Andrew the upper hand <laughs> that's all I have to lose so uh. Sad news is uh, Virgin Galactic apparently I think it's filed for bankruptcy. Mm. That was one of the two space ventures that uh, Richard Branson had backed. Virgin Galactic was trying to actually do basically launching payloads uh, from an airplane to reach orbit. And they had a big test that they were trying to do, which was going to be, I think, at launching actually from uh, Britain. And then... Or this Virgin Orbit? Oh, um, so, sorry, Virgin Orbit. Yeah, so Orbit's the one that's filing for bankruptcy. The the roller coaster for yeah, incredibly rich you. people will still be going. Theoretically. Well, Virgin Galactic, yeah, right? It, yeah, sorry. Uh, let me get the... And yeah, Vir, yeah, Virgin Galactic's got some problems, too. There's some concerns about that. Well, we... Yeah, uh, so. yeah we've, we've, <laughs> we've talked about how we feel about... Yeah, roller coasters. Well, I mean, look, I, I think that that uh, space tourism is something that is probably more viable now than it has ever been. Uh, you know, in terms of of uh, uh, it being a a thing that the public has seen happen a lot. They've seen private companies go to space a lot. You've had famous people that have gone to space. So it's like the idea of space tourism now now makes sense to me in a way that it really hasn't over the last 20 years. That being said, you know, uh, the, the way the technology goes, there's a lot of people that are trying to build on breakthroughs from the past that, you know, might not be the thing that actually cracks the code. And we've seen this in, in so many different areas, hardware, software, uh, you know, a generative stuff like AI, and, and certainly space is, is one of them. Everybody who's betting on different Ways to do it. Some of them make more sense than others, and and unfortunately for Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit, uh, that well, ain't it, Chief. And well, and the, the, there's a temptation to dance on the graves of every company that doesn't make oh. it. But but everybody, as we've talked about before, especially in the After Things podcast, uh, the failures subsidize the successes. And so uh, every every attempt, you know, now I've I, learned one less wrong way to do that. I yeah I. I'm rooting for, I mean, I'm rooting for Virgin Galactic to, to pull through. Like they, again, the Virgin Galactic is still a viable company, still there. Virgin Orbit is the one that is the one that filed for bankruptcy. I, I'm rooting for all of them because I think they're interesting things, but it does illustrate the, an argument that we don't make, but you'll hear people say, you know, like when somebody like Elon Musk would do something like, well, of course he's rich. It's like, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's, Look at the highway that's littered with the wrecks of people trying to build electric car companies and yeah. rocket companies and all that, and tell me that the answer is just being rich. It is. It's not, because it's just, it is, you've seen Richard Branson, who is one of the most capable people in the world, when it comes to marketing and promotion, getting people excited about something, and just a neat guy, you know, is very sincere about this, and 
they're just technical problems. Sometimes these things are just really hard. You think you think that this this component's going to work and the stack is going to work and their failure rate's going to be enough. And then you get it. They had this high profile launch that they were actually launching from, you know, like British territory. I think that was actually the Canary Islands. And they it failed. And that was like, they're kind of like, if we make this, we make it. If we don't, and SpaceX had their moment like that, where they're like, if we, this, this attempt fails, we're out of the game. And had it failed, yeah, we might not be talking about SpaceX right now. And it could, it could come down to just a $50 component. Yeah. And, and look, it, it takes, takes a lot of things to go right. You know, there, there is no perfect alchemy to success. Uh, uh, it is something that you have to feel out. And, and when you're talking about big, big, big swings, like getting to space, uh, that's it's very expensive. You don't get unlimited tries at it. Yeah. I feel like, uh, you know what? I feel like uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, an audible here. Mm -hmm. I feel like we should extend the pick segment and each of us should get two picks. Okay. All right. Would All you like right. to start? Well, my my uh, first pick. Yeah. Say my second one. My first pick is uh, we all went out and saw the Dungeons and Dragons movie, and mm -hmm. that was quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, it uh, uh, whip tight pacing. There's not a single unearned surprise. There's not a single thread that is left dangling at the end. Uh, I never expected that a Dungeons and Dragons movie could say so many clever things. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I think uh, the question has always been with that. IP, uh, uh, how do you make a Dungeons and Dragons movie? And I think that the answers either in, in aborted attempts or in uh, uh, the previous movie version has always been, oh, it's Lord of the Rings or it's, it's an epic high fantasy kind of thing. And uh, except this time it'll use the words that they use in Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. Uh, what this movie I think made the correct decision is that no, it's in, 80s uh, uh, act, a fantasy action comedy. And when it's not being funny, it is being an action, uh, uh, a fantasy action thing. So there's a lot of spells, a lot of crazy weapons, a lot of monsters. Uh, and then when it's not doing that, it's funny, but it's never a parody. It's never, and I think that that's, that's, a, that's a very key distinction is that it never looked like when things go wrong in the story with magic, it is the characters failing, not any wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, uh, hey, this is about this other movie that we're referencing. It feels original. It feels good. Great cast, man. Chris Pine. I feel like Chris Pine just needs, we just need to talk about how good Chris Pine is. He's just a good actor. I, uh, also, maybe, I, I maybe think... my favorite role that Michelle Rodriguez has played ever. Possibly, yeah, ever. Andrew? I think I've not seen it, but you know, the, the directors of this were, they've had a very interesting career. They've had some hits and some misses, and I don't know, as screenwriters. And I kind of think that I've looked at some of their hits and go, these guys are clear, like they wrote Spider-Man Homecoming. Like these guys clearly have a grasp of comedy. And I think that putting them in the seat of being able to direct what they were doing uh, turned out really well. Did you see, did you see uh, Game Night, by the way? Oh, I yeah. did, yeah. Uh, multiple it's times. It's so good. That's a yeah, so I think that there was there's sometimes you hear so and so's gonna direct something. I'm like uh, are they a writer's director or are they like a special effects director? And I think they made the right choice here. Yeah, because they did very, very capable action in game night and they did extraordinarily capable fantasy action here in in this movie. I I, I really, really hope. Mm -hmm. I think it's been enough of a financial success that uh you could see it doing, you know, more or having a, a sequel, and I think that it 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 deserves it. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think it it, uh, it also uh, it never. Uh, this is kind of a reverse spoiler, and and I think it's what? a bit of a public service. It's not a spoiler. Like I went in expecting detached irony, and for it to pull a Lego movie, where at some point it was going to turn out to be kids in a basement. They don't do that. It's it's very in the moment. It's exactly what it pretends to be, and I I, I appreciated that because that's the harder path to make work and make you love the universe and the characters in the world. Yeah. The, the challenge they have is it, it's overperformed, but the expectations were very low and that hopefully it's something that like, remember Batman begins didn't do like crazy numbers, but yeah. then Batman begins was one of those movies that every, like, did you see that? And like, Oh yeah, that was awesome. And they were like watching it later on. It, it, it it's, 
legacy was made on cable was legacy was made on home video and you sometimes see movies that come out that we go oh shoot like remember remember when we were begging people to go see dread yes yes yeah that was like it's a great movie and it just had unfortunately buzz marketing and everything because D the problem with this is like i we just expected this to be you know really we've seen just versions of that that have been fresh in our memories that just weren't good and people trying to do the fantasy lore and comedy and failing and it was just sort of this uphill sort of battle but hopefully hopefully I, the studio is like oh yeah no this actually worked we just need to figure out i will say having seen the movie it was horribly marketed like it was marketed yeah. like the first D D movie where it was just about the like fantasy element and it's like oh except this time we have a roguish chris pine as the lead there are laugh out loud visual gags that would have played really well in in a in trailer uh, <laughs> like, and 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 i think that ultimately for if people who are going to like this movie are going to like it because of it i think hardcore dnd fans i've not heard any hardcore dnd fans complaining about it uh i do think it will have a bit of a cult status and uh you know, be it on streaming or, or somewhere else. I, I do hope that, that uh, more stuff gets made because I, I did very much enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, do you think, do you think, what would they do for a sequel, right? Would they do an anthology and do a whole new crew? Jar Jonathan's Revenge. Oh or do gosh. they, or, objectively the best name. Or do they keep this same cast? I mean, this cast was great, but it also does seem like that these stories c concluded. Uh, you know what I suspect? I suspect they'll, they'll do, uh, the, just like real D and D campaigns, players join and play for a few weeks, and then they have to go on a trip or whatever. And so the party changes, but it you know balances again. And even in this movie, the party has you know changed a couple times. Um, my guess is that we start movie two with individual threads, maybe a surprising new character or something. But then we see some a number of these familiar characters come back. And they were excited once that number hits five. And, and uh, uh, I, I, I'd be in for that again and again and again. Uh, I will, my final comment on Dungeons and Dragons. Hugh Grant stands. Run, don't walk. Run, don't walk. If you like <laughs> Hugh Grant just mincing around, being very Hugh Grant, boy, do you get, you get a full double-barreled Hugh Grant one barrel's named Hugh, the other barrel's named Grant, and, <laughs> and it delivers. Okay. Well, there's a pick. And my, my second pick is uh, uh, one that I'll, I'll wait for somebody else to bring up. My pick was D&D. &D. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Uh, well, I, okay, I guess it'll be me. Uh, my pick will be World's Greatest Con. Huzzah! Hello, it's back. That was my second it pick. It will be back on Monday. It will be back on Monday. It will be back on Monday. Uh, uh, it's going to be a good season. These guys have been putting blood, sweat, and tears into it. Uh, it's a new story. I won't spoil it in case you haven't already been spoiled, but the spoiler's out there. Um, it, the trailer's out. You and can the listen out. to the trailer. I, I consider that Great trailer, by the way. Bill Meeks did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, he under, did the, under uh, Justin's direction. He yeah. did the, uh, yeah, he did all the the um, the visuals for our, for our, our uh, social media a blitz on it but it came uh, out great well yeah. all looked great great team guys great work yeah. um, uh world's greatest con on podcatchers everywhere uh quick find it quick quick tactical reminder con fever. that that monday and exactly that day on monday is the day that you want as many humans as possible to subscribe on uh, uh the apple podcast platform yep because many other things pinch from their top 10 lists and we would like very much to get back to the top of the history charts on that yes so put it on your calendar to do it on monday monday or do it right now if world's greatest con episodes one and two we're, we're launching with two episodes Ooh. so uh, uh you will get two hours of world's greatest con in your life on monday episode one and episode project two. episode two alpha <laughs> <laughs> episode three colon Episode four, hooray. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited. I look forward to sharing this with all my friends because I think, you know, you guys continue to do great work and just such a great story. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm not nervous. You're nervous. Yeah. We've been talking about how nervous you were about this. You want to know who else told a yeah. great story? Hmm. 
<laughs> the audience at home, they're raising their fingers and saluting themselves. We have to explain it on this show because we haven't done that. Oh, yeah. No, it, is, it is Good Friday. He's talking about God, everybody. It the is, Holy it Christ. Is, oh. it, is, it is Good <laughs> Friday. Oh, oh, it is Good Friday. Hey, yeah, good Friday exactly. to you. Yeah. How's it hanging? Oh, it's hanging good. And it's hanging Friday. <laughs> Uh, Any other picks? <laughs> and Andrew, I, 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 I'm I assuming one of your picks will be World's Greatest Con, but did you have another? Well, if I have to have another one. Yeah. Uh, I watched a really well done, a couple documentaries actually I'm going to recommend. Um, first is there's a documentary that was made, uh, a three doc I got three documentaries for you, okay? Two, two fun, one O. Oh. Uh, one is there is a, a documentary called Chaos on the Bridge, which was William Shatner narrated and presented this, and it was about the making of Star Trek The Next Generation mm. and how chaotic it was. You know, it went from the show that's like, that's not Star Trek to some people, that is their idea of what Star Trek is. And Shatner talks to some of the original writers, original people that worked on it. It demystifies Gene Roddenberry a bit, and Gene Roddenberry absolutely deserves credit for just creating this wonderful, great vision that became what you know we look at today. But Star Trek was very much more so than, let's say, Star Wars or some other franchises, uh, an ensemble that made that. And and you kind of get that when you watch Next Generation, and there is this story where somebody says like, "Oh, you know, Roddenberry had the idea for the Ferengi," and he's like, "And they wear these cod pieces." And this is how they have sex. He says he described like 36 different sexual positions that are like, Gene, Gene, <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> and so there's there's a there's there's another one where like the, in the second season, Picard is still a little bit too uptight. And they're like, Can we can we like get him like a woman or something? So they come up with this idea of sending him to Risa Seven, you know, the pleasure planet. And then Gene's like, like, yeah, they're giving these women like fondling each other. And then like men holding hands walking off. And then we could be like, we just need to get them late, Gene. <laughs> 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 so there's a lot of neat stories about that. But also, uh, you know, Gene Rodbury was a fascinating guy and, and did. This is a guy. I think there could be a great movie about him if you look at him in his totality, which is a guy that fought that fought in World War II and did, you know, bombing missions and what have you and and saw kind of the worst who still had this very idealistic idea. And they talk about it like, you know, in the 70s, you know, after Star Trek got canceled, they were all kind of like, you know, the stories about, you know, Shatner having to live out of like a camper van. And then, you know, for Roddenberry was making his money by going around to conventions with his wife and like selling stuff and then doing college speaking and whatnot. And there was still was this sort of idea of this optimism and stuff it's a very very interesting uh story that i think it kind of just sheds light onto it i think like yeah there could be a great gene rodberry biopic because he was complicated but still created this thing that we all get to play it and enjoy today second one is another star trek one i was never into deep space nine and i know a lot of people love it and i don't I'm not critical of that but they did a documentary the showrunner did a documentary called um uh, the things we left behind, which was about it's a retrospective about Deep Space Nine and very open. Let's talk about everything, even him talking to a Paramount exec like we wanted to do this. Why couldn't we do this? Why did we have to let go of this actor and stuff like that? And so it's a really neat sort of like, even though I've never only watched a handful of episodes of that show to sort of see them talk about the, that journey and what they made. That that was one that. um uh, I, I dipped into because I was watching TNG at the time, but you know, a strange thing happens when you go to college, you kind of stop watching TV for a minute. And, uh, uh, but then by the time I had come back to it, a lot had changed. They now had a ship and Worf was on it. And I was like, well, Hey, I'm, I'm here for what this is. <laughs> I, I don't know what they were doing at first. Yeah. Well, I think that was, I think, and, and, they talk about like, well, then we got the, like, oh, people wanted us to go around in a ship and then kind of dot, dot, dot. Then we got a ship and it's like, yeah, let's talk about this choice, guys, because clearly there was there was a and, and they wanted to do their own kind of story within the Star Trek universe. It's fine. But like I remember when they announced Deep Space Nine, I was excited because I thought it was gonna be like a Stargate like show. Like they're going to go through this portal into a new world each time. And then it's like, nope, it's a space station. Yeah, it's the love boat. Well, and, and it's and like. And and I I believe the pitch was if Star Trek is a wagon train to the stars, then this was you know being the sheriff of a small town town along the way. And the problem is those small towns have a lot of tumbleweeds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
So I, but there are people who love that show and I love that that exists for them. It didn't take anything away from me. Um, I could go try to watch Voyager and reconcile why they think having a two-year-old or a two-year-old alien have relationships with people was okay, <laughs> which is weird. That was like, I'm like that cast storyline. Like there's like, I'm like, are they going to like, she's two and she's like dating. And it's like, well, her species is more advanced. Like, ah, no guys, like this is really weird. Can I we mean, just get it's not like seven this and is nine? prime time family. Ba- oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're launching so, a whole network. Oh, <laughs> launching a network with this. Oh, that's yeah. gotcha. Interesting. So, uh, but that show evolved and has its people who absolutely love it. And I think that they did give a lot of great, you know, Voyager gave a lot of people love us Star Trek, but uh, it's not my pick, but just a side note, Picard still loving it. Not gonna, not gonna hide. I think I'm I think I'm one behind you on Picard, but uh, but I agree, loving it. It's very good. And the the guy that plays Jack Crusher, super charismatic, great. And then the villain played by Amanda Plummer, uh, they're fantastic. Amanda Plummer. At first, I'm like, this is a pretty good, compelling actor. And it's like, oh, it's Amanda Plummer, you know, from you know everything. And so it was just really really cool to see that. Now my sad pick, but a really a documentary we're seeing is um, I've been working on a new book and I've been saw, heard about this documentary before. I had a chance to watch it. It's called Dave Not Coming Back. And it was about a disastrous attempt to recover a body in a cave, a underwater cave in South Africa that was extremely deep, like 600 feet deep. And a young man had died there years ago. And then some other divers did a descent into there. And one of them actually saw the body and then decided he would come back with the team and they would try to recover the body. The recovery didn't go so well. Mm. And it is a really well done documentary. They take you step by step through with the people involved, hearing their points of view on stuff, what happened. They have footage from when it happened and what happened. And then modern day, you know, contemporary footage, um, really good score, really, really well produced in a very, you just, there's, you get to the last parts of it and there is a reason to stay on for the end. Cause it is just gut wrenching. Wow. Where did, uh, where did you watch that? Uh, did you rent it? Uh, I bought that on iTunes. Dave, not coming back. There you go. Check it out. Good stuff. Any other picks guys? No, I think we've, we've picked oh, a lot. Oh, oh. Let me, let me, let me recommend where you can watch a couple of the other documentaries I mm-hmm. watched is uh, shout TV has a streaming service. And so it's free. It's like it's you know it's a ad, ad, advertising job. But if you go to Shout TV, they have a couple of the Star Trek documentaries and a lot of other content on there. I watched one of them, and there was one commercial at the beginning, and that was it. Nice, good stuff. Shout TV, get the app. Yep, gentlemen, mm-hmm. how are we feeling? A uh, little bit, uh, little, little, uh, little, little bit, little bit end of the show. <laughs> little weird it's been weird hey there it is hey good job okay hey yeah uh brian picard the only thing i'll say is the he has run away troy scenes he has run away long if you i see i can see him leaving he's he's out of here i'm gonna finish my thought it's fine that's okay hello everybody we're gonna get started we're gonna do some after things here in just a moment after things after things uh hello 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 um Hi, everybody. Uh, we're going to get doing that in just a few minutes, but uh, in the meantime, we'll, we'll hang out here and uh, just chillax. We are. We're, we're simply chillaxing. That's all we're doing. So if you think we're doing anything else, you're a liar. Oh, Schwit.com is listening on the inside sound stage. I'm not going to join that session. Wait, what? Uh, we've got um, We've got all the... Uh, the wireless audio stuff around here. Oh. The Spotify was like, hey, I'm going to be helpful. Don't you want to? Don't you want a Fanta? <laughs> don't you want to? <laughs> want a Fanta? I, uh, a buddy of mine is having a birthday party tonight. Okay. And uh, he just found out that they <laughs> closed the restaurant today. I'm oh, ass- Jesus. I'm assuming it's because of the weather, but um, he's like, he was organizing it for himself with like 20 some people. So now he's got to like, find somewhere else tonight where was the uh, like i don't remember the- that's crazy and so the, i guess like when you when uh sometimes you feel like a nut sometimes you don't uh, if you ain't if you ain't open then uh, whoopsie yeah leave uh, it on our yelp review 
I guess so. <laughs> for our closed restaurant. <laughs> Like, I guess it's like, hey, you think you're having a bad time? I had to close my restaurant. Yeah. And and I guess maybe if it's all outside, I guess that makes sense. Because it's cold and it's wet today. But uh, it does not seem... I, I didn't think it's a place that's... It's like a Brazilian place. I don't think it was outside. But anyway. Wait, are they like closed for good or just closed today? Just today oh so they're not okay no that is their oh fault then. that is their fault yeah 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 yeah. um so that's really uh that's that's kind of so strange so they had made a reservation i think he i think he made it through um one of those concierge credit card uh, things oh and so how do you find out uh i think they call, i don't know exactly um I don't know. They do have some posts on their social media. Due to weather conditions, we're closing to today and yesterday. Okay, so maybe they are outside. Uh, anyway. Due to weather conditions. Due to weather conditions. That's a bummer. I wanted to have some Peruvian cuisine. What's your favorite Peruvian dish, Bryce? Oh, I love um, the Peruvian potatoes. Yeah, so those are great. Man. I love the Peruvian salads. The way they, like, snap or... or or soft, uh, yeah. The way that those, but it's yeah. the right balance of those two. It's it's, it's just the right at amount. At the same time, yeah. it's kind of an al dente potato. He's a great potato. <laughs> Peruvian potato, folks. We love our Peruvian potatoes, don't we? Gosh, I, 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 it's the sound of somebody who had to watch a lot. We of love them. Cable TV this <laughs> we week. We love them. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, like eating. Anything before we do after things? Nah, let's roll. Let's rock it. All right. Andrew, you good? I'm great. And I'll catch you in for after things. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Bryce Castillo. Hello. And we have two guests in the studio here today who are going to yeah. talk about podcasting and creating new content. Gentlemen, can you um, introduce yourself? Which I understand... I will introduce them oh, in a moment. <laughs> I, I, just trying, just doing, I, I, you know what? You, you lead on this bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to believe that Thank this you. is somebody's very first time encountering this program, and they're very confused. Yeah. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. May I, Bryce? May I continue? Uh, yes, please. I second the motion to let Andrew finish this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a weird to, uh, podcast to use Robert's who... Rules of Order. <laughs> 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 two, two, uh, two podcasters here to talk about Basically, it's just easy, I guess, is what you would call it. Like, podcasting's easy, trouble-free. It's just, it's simple. And so I, I bring to you uh, Justin Robert Young and mm. Brian Brushwood. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it is easy. Mm. Well, uh, <laughs> you just set your so mind to do it. Podcasting. Does that you have do something it. to do with laundry pods? <laughs> Explain this to me. Uh... Yeah. It's so funny that you say that because we part of our conversation that we had, where we had lunch and then we came over here was uh, Brian thinking about how he was going to explain to a friend who is not particularly tech savvy step by step how to tweet about the show. Oh, <laughs> like like, like, like a, I know, a, a legit I know conversation. Do, I know he could do one tweet. I don't know if he is understanding of how to do a tweet thread. Yes. Do I know this friend? Tweets. You do. You do. Yeah, uh, I think I know who this friend is. I think I have an idea. Uh, Can you just write it out for this person? <laughs> well, uh, I no, I, I guess that's too. Even that's even not easy enough, huh? It's like give the first. No, tweet, no, they would, and then a picture in a circle. Press this button, and yes. then do the second tweet, and then press this button again, and then give this exact link. <laughs> uh. I endeared myself to this person once because I had the foresight to do something very basic that we would all do in a technical capacity. Yeah. And to them, they were, I'll display later, but they were delighted that I did that. We're so <laughs> grateful. Yeah. Uh, anyway. But yeah. So uh, podcasting, uh, simple, easy, beautiful, cover girl. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh also surprising at times. So um, here's an, a totally unrelated story <clears throat> uh, to, to podcasting in general. Uh, I had a very clever idea of uh, buying some property. And my idea was, you know what? I have to keep the story engine going. So uh, as I'm running out of time, 
to you know develop new tricks for you know scam school scam nation what i'll do is i'll have a like a combination air bed and breakfast uh, uh for uh, in a production studio and we'll import uh talented storytellers and they'll give excellent stories uh and it was a very very good idea that happened one month before the pandemic and then uh uh uh, uh great uh, uh that's fine pivot 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 uh, uh then justin around this time uh, we start, we were working. We were just about to finish up World's Greatest Con season one, mm-hmm. and boy, oh boy, man, uh, everybody loved that a lot. And then season two came out, and boy, during the pandemic, were ads raining. So it's like, you know what we should do? We should lean all the way in and tell an extraordinary story. We'll yeah. actually go on the road and because that, that was the thing. Interviews. That was the thing with 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 the pandemic was that everybody knew that people were at home, and so they they were leaning into any kind of digital thing. Because people were ravenous for content, uh, and so just raining, raining those ad dollars. Yeah, the ad market's a fickle thing, and it's something that you don't really see a lot of on the front of stuff. But oftentimes, if things are late or not when you want them to come out, like there's a lot of business side stuff, like in movies, uh, it, it's theatrical windows that they're trying to hit or award season consideration. Blah 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 blah. There's a lot of reasons why things get sched- scheduled when they do, but in in podcasting. None is bigger than advertising. When can this show launch to get the most amount out of, especially in the limited series game, which is what we are in? Yeah, like season by season, and so uh, yeah, we uh, and we invest, and it's it's six seven months, and we refine, and we have exquisite story, and 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 boy oh boy, this is it, this is it, just in time for. That's the sound of ads not not being there. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's it's a bummer, uh, real bummer. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it 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 sucks. Uh, uh, a the economic landscape is weird right now. Uh, no, nobody's suspicions. sure whether or not they want to pull the trigger. And if they are going to pull the trigger, what they want are blue chip known commodities. They'd rather not, overpay not one emerging, ad, not right. a, you know what they've done in the past, which is they always want to advertise on the big thing. Play the but they'll do a little bit of it on there, and then they'll spread it around a little bit. Now, the, the appetite for any kind of risk is next to zero, and uh, ads are hard to come by. And we have... Since we opened the kimono here on this show, we have tried uh, not once, but twice. We have had two very capable, very efficient uh, sales teams try to uh, uh, shake the, the money tree. And we have had woefully few budded fruits well, and, fall upon our noggins. Uh, and to be honest, if, if we're really opening up the kimono, um, we felt this. Uh, about eight months ago in August of last year with the Mono Rogue channel because um, uh, traditionally we we built this we built this business uh, we we built this business on the idea that that what we do is we tell ex- exceptional stories and we earned real estate of the mind attention and we uh, harvest that in the form of either action sign up for this thing uh, so that we can keep in touch and tell you the next story or in uh, sales, uh, either retail sales or, you know, a little bit of ads, what have you. And then we reinvest everything into bigger, bigger stories. Uh, that I still believe that is an excellent engine because it's universal, but the landscape does change. And boy, has the landscape changed since I believe we started working on this story before uh, the bottom dropped out on the advertising on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we're we're in the middle. Uh, many people will notice that Modern Rogue uh, got a little thin on the long form episodes, but now we're we're. Uh, I'm pleased to report, thanks to the efforts of Bryce Castillo, um, uh, we're crushing it on shorts, and we'll see where that goes from there. Uh, but like what? But but this project started before any of the rules changed, and now we have we find ourselves with about a hundred and uh, hundred hours between as we record this to release launching yeah. to figure out exactly what our messaging is going to be to explain without boohooing. This is a very good story that was a 
monumental investment on both of our parts, both in time, in, in out-of-pocket money, in cashing in favors, and every single person who has heard it has agreed it is far and away our best story yet. And so now we, we have to figure out how to come out the other side of this release with enough money to do it again yeah. next year. And, yeah. and uh, so we're having discussions. <laughs> can you, but, I mean, can you, can you illustrate for people how big that contribution is? Because right now it's a little, I mean, is it uh, uh, our, our contribution? I mean, the, from the advertising, like, so we made, it, we made so yeah, much yeah, last, year, last, 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 can, last yeah. year, last year we made in, 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 into the five figures on, on just straight ad sales. Just, just, and that was just all for uh, hand lotions and face lotions and, and all sorts of crazy stuff. And, and uh, yeah, I think we had one Adam and Eve ad. Like there yep. was like, we sold, we, we, we tatted that thing up like a NASCAR and that's, that's what we were expecting to do bigger uh, uh, this, this year. Uh, but, but, th but this year, this year, right now, our commitments are low four figures, everything else. Like, so our pivot, uh, we, we don't, we don't, really have an option other than to figure out how to enhance our overall story and begin to directly solicit. Uh, and I think Justin is a hundred percent right when we were talking about this earlier, uh, like buckle up your big podcasts will still have ads. Everybody else, your, your, your emerging podcasts, your niche podcasts, your, your new anybody, favorites, anybody under 70,000 guaranteed, um, is they're all about to start embracing the NPR model and we intend to be one of the first. <laughs> can I, can I offer something to the floor as a suggestion and sure. you can tear it apart. It's fine. Yeah. Um, you, you have an audience, you have tens of thousands of people like to listen to your content. Mm -hmm. Um, and your goal is to monetize that. And one of the ways you monetize that is through advertising. Now, the ways we've done this before is Patreon, et cetera, whatever. But there's a huge audience, and there's an audience that overlaps with your audience that could effortlessly help support your thing without even having to feel like they're doing anything. I go to Audible, and I don't see World's Greatest Con other than as the podcast. But man, oh man, uh, if I could buy this as one of my Audible picks, and uh, listen Andrew, to like I do my... Uh, 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 this was literally my business model for raise the debt. And so here's the only problem with, with, uh, uh, the audible, the audible side of it. Um, number one, the audible marketplace, at least that I've found when I released raise the debt as, as an audible subscription or an audible, an audible book. Um, it does not, they, they want something that is one complete story and even editing together a bunch of little mini chapters was not something that I feel like people responded to in the way that I wanted to. The other issue is, is that if we were to do that, we would have needed to have had everything sewn up and submitted to audible, uh, probably at, hey. at, at the bare minimum, uh, a couple months ago, uh, at least in terms uh, of the okay. lead time of approval. Two things. Yeah. Did I write one book and put one book out there and go, okay, I understand the market and how this works? No, you did not. Okay. I created more content. I kept following through. I kept doing that because trying to say, I, this is one thing. I put this thing out there and it didn't work. Maybe it's a horrible, I, I, maybe it no. is, but I mean, I did like, do it twice, but yeah. I, 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 I didn't do it once, but, uh, uh, but I, I, I get your point. I, well, I could uh, have continued uh, well, doing but it. It's, it's the, yeah. it's the raise the dead. I'm saying you did it with raise the dead, which is very niche sort of thing. And, and one of the things I do is I would dip into another niche because maybe, maybe that isn't a huge niche unless somebody's getting for political stuff to get promoted. I don't know, but I'm the, saying it's like, the, there's an avenue. Sell, I, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. Oh, I, 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 uh, uh, just a confounding vector that is worth remembering is, um, uh, season one of World's Greatest Con was based on a story where pretty much one person has the book rights to it. And we were able to do it as a podcast because we involved enough Brian Tall Tales and uh, we were able to present it as a campfire story that uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we uh, we didn't have to worry about getting in tr or I, I mean, to be honest, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Netflix can say, hey, we bought these these rights to these stories and we paid good money for it. Knock it off, take the podcast down. And we were willing to accept that possibility. Instead, we were lucky enough that Netflix says, your 
your podcast that is exactly the story of Ben McIntyre's book uh, uh, is exactly in line with our movie. Would you like to interview the Academy Award winning director of this movie? So, so we lucked out on that. Uh, I do feel like putting that first season on Audible would probably have complicating factors. And outside okay. of that, most of the second season being an anthology was based on uh, various blog posts, magazine articles, a, a couple of documentaries, and, and it was books. It was a yeah, bunch of books too. Books, right? So, uh, so and, and I don't. Th th this is the first time we've ever had anything okay. that that's really air quotes ours, and by ours, I'm including you know our friends who are the principal characters of it. I and fair and just and fair too to what you said, but I would say that. Um, there, you could do it a year from now. It doesn't matter. It's not like you have to launch it in this window. I'm not saying, oh, you did poorly by doing this thing that worked really well before. I'm saying there's multiple markets. You know, my agent's job is I go, she makes a deal with me. She makes a deal with Amazon and Amazon's cool. We're going to publish my book. The next thing she does is she goes over to the big book fair in Europe and sells all these individual rights. Then she goes out to LA and she talks to the TV people and then the film people and then the audio people. And then like, there's all those different places. And that's, that's why my agency that I have still works really well is because they say, there's a little bit here. There's a little bit here. There's no one big, huge payday. There's sometimes there is, but it's all these other little things that make up for it. And I think that like with this stuff, it's like, you know, everything hurt is the content's and, been great. And like, and to be honest, you are 100%. Uh, the, the only, uh, tweak I, I would I would offer is uh, that that is a hundred percent correct in the collective in the long term but uh, uh, maybe maybe what we're wrestling with is what are in future money terms absolutely correct because in future money terms uh, if I could talk out of school a little bit we think there's a Netflix series in here we think there's a movie in here we think there's a documentary in here uh, however those are future money things um, uh -huh. how, how does one uh, handle today money for a speculative project that is extraordinarily good, but, but, but the market has changed in ways to immediately monetize it? Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you, uh, 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 go ahead. Okay. So one, one is I, the, one of my biggest regret I have and when it comes to my AP is that years ago I was in a rough spot and I got an offer for the audiobook rights for a couple of my indie titles. Right. And at the time I didn't have the time or the you know, money to go produce on my own. And I said, okay, so I sold those audiobook rights. I sold them at a fraction and the amount of money I make is nowhere near. It, it, it's, it's ridiculously low compared to what I could have made if I produced it myself or did whatever. And it's the one piece of IP I think like, man, I'd love to claim, claim back those audiobook rights because I look at how much money I make from audiobooks now. I look at how much money our friends like Scott Sigler does from audiobooks. Holy crap, like that guy. And, and I made that, I was worried about the money right now and I got paid. I'm like, cool, here's the money. But then I'm like, man, was there a way I could have done this differently? Could I have gone to somebody and say, hey, can I, you know, could you lend me money on the rights to these things? And if I don't, you know, if not, then they, you get them or I sell them or whatever. There were other ways I could have probably creatively financed it that I would have retained the rights to that. Like I'm, I'm advising a young filmmaker right now who has what seems like a really good film I invested in, and he's trying to get completion funds and he's ready to give up points and stuff. And I'm like, don't do that if you don't have to. You know, there look for other ways. And so I'd say that, you know, there might be another an offline conversation we could talk about because I'd say that like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. When, when I first, you guys first told me what you're doing, I'm like, holy crap! Like this could be all those things you guys said did. Yeah, and and, and let's let's be clear where we are here. Like, uh, this is a thing that it would be a bummer if we did not make the same kind of money that we made. We likely will not make the same kind of money that we made on season two, ad wise, right? But but, uh, but I would take in trade it being explosive and very popular. Sure, yeah. yeah. And so like I, 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 nothing that is going to happen from here will affect the the quality of the the product uh, or or the releaseability of the product or how much we are going to own on the product. And those are elements that I think are absolutely sacred. This is really us just trying to figure out a message to dial up personal investment from listeners. What is our value proposition? What's the story that we're telling and uh, uh how do we how do we walk a line between explaining something that is 
insidery uh without cutting without it off as as, as a as a sob story when they're enjoying we're at a party that mm-hmm. we're throwing that they're enjoying uh uh you don't you don't want to in the middle of the party be like i don't think i'm gonna get divorced like you know right. so it, I, are you uh is the idea that you're looking for more crowdfunding i mean there is you have the patreon you could make that's exclusive no, th- this content is, or yeah i, I mean uh that, right, that's and, an and, and that's, these are the conversations yeah. that are going to be settled within the next twenty-four hours. Uh, yeah, no, uh, you're one hundred percent right, Bryce. Um, uh, that is the delicate dance that we have to do because what we have to express is uh, there's no boohooing here. However, we began this project in one environment, and right. now we're in a different environment re- with regard to ad sales. Um, and oftentimes, like the easiest button to hit is oh my God, we're in trouble. Like, and that's a button we don't want to hit because we're not in trouble. Yeah, but that's um, not, I, yeah, but again, I don't look at that bottom as, button as like, oh, I'm in trouble that you guys pull a fail safe. I'm like, you know, your fans want to be part of this and want to support it. And when the, when the, the ticket is so cheap to do that, it's 10 or 20 bucks or whatever. Nobody's looking. It's not like, Hey, uh, Justin got drunk, fell down the stairs. We need to pay for you know his right. hospital bill. Well, this and, is and, and we made a thing, and you, and help you, us but, make more. And but, but you can that's, start. That's but enough first. stories from my birthday. <laughs> you can start solution first, right? Uh, like you don't have to. Like I, I think you don't. Uh, I think you're right in that you don't want to tell people that it's about ad sales because that's not their problem. Um, but you already have means to say you can support this, you know, between whether it's Patreon or an email list or what have you. Yeah. I think you have plenty of other avenues where you don't even need to bring that up. Like, I think that that's not a problem that is going to help. And I mean, I guess the vulnerability of it is a part of it, but that's the same thing as saying we're in trouble. And I don't think you want to do that. I guess, but yeah, that's, that's the question is, is, is whether or not telling a story of a larger thing that is happening that will affect the creators that you love is us saying, we're in trouble or boohoo to us. And that's, that's, that's the question is, is like, okay, if part of this season, which we think is the best that we've ever done, uh, is that this is going to be more listener supported than it's ever been. And it was not by design or maybe it is by design, right? Like we have, we have full control over our message on exactly what we want it to be. It can be, you know, when ads came to us and they were, they said, Oh my God, this is the greatest show ever. And we told you, screw you, GE. We want to only get money from our fans. We could do that. We could say, which is more the truth, that, uh, uh, holy crap, uh, the, I, the, the, I, the shape of user-made content might be different over the next 10 years. We could do that. We don't know. We're going to find out. This, 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 this all takes place inside of the heads of only two people. Everybody else is like, when and how? When and how? When yeah. and how? Yeah. Like, right, right, and 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 that that's also a good way to put it because you're right. It does only exist in uh, mine and Justin's brains, and this is not a question of of uh, anything other than what is the sharpest messaging we can mm-hmm. write that celebrates how good this is, that contextualizes it with the strange transformation over the last year, and makes people feel the best mm-hmm. for uh, uh, deciding just how much they love it and and whether or not they're willing to sign up for an email list, whether mm-hmm. or not they're willing to sign up for Patreon, whether or not they're willing to contribute money on Patreon or well, whatever. So start with the content. I mean, what is it that you're going, you are going to do to offer to them? Uh, well, uh, is, it, uh, is it exclusive? Are you going to make exclusive stuff on Patreon? Are you going to figure out uh, an audio book uh, thing or a trans? These like are you, the you, conversations. You, well, I, 100 hours, Bryce. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, look, you came here asking for advice. I'm yeah. just trying to walk no, it through. Uh, uh, Sorry. <laughs> as a matter of fact, both of both, both you and Andrew, both of your advice has been extremely validating. Very valuable. For, for, for the well, conversation yeah. that we've had over the last yes. couple hours. I, I, and we know, I mean, again, I, that I usually start everything where I tell people like, I'm not going to tell anything you haven't already thought or heard, but you know, let me, let me reinforce the thing that may need to be reinforced. I know that you don't want to get into the trap of having to create new content to justify something, whatever, cause you're, you're pretty full up on that. But you know, I, again, a 20 minute, you know, you guys sit down and record a, a 20 minute after show that only paid subscribers get people. You're just, you know, you know, this, just give us an excuse to click pay you instead of free and if i go oh well i get these things extremely you know, validating I, no, Brian, this yes. is very I know, I know. extremely validating and, and it's it's a i i know you know that i'm for everybody else out here we've had these are conversations we've had before about that and it's just it's just 
to our audience that understand, it's like, it's just, it is, it I is. know sometimes people go, this is free. This is 10 bucks. I'm like, tell me a story to pay $10 and I will pay it. Give me something I will never read. I will pay this, but don't just tell me I can give you $10 or not. Uh, it's astonishing. I'm starting to think that we should have, uh, 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 if not an intern, an AI uh, thing, summarize everything we've talked about over the years of After Things and come up with a, a, a four-person written book of, of our style guide of success <laughs> as an independent creator. I just want a chat bot. I just ask these questions so I can just remind Whoa. us of all of our uh, of all the, all our great ideas. It's pretty good. When I write, I'd love to have other Andrew tell me, well, what's your conflict? What are you doing? What is yeah. going on here? I'd love to have like the things I know, but I kind of hide in the corner to avoid to just sort of come back at me. Um, well, uh, uh, all of which is to say, hmm. um, man, oh, man, do a lot of our emails and letters uh, to after things uh, essentially ask the questions. I have very good story. What is an efficient path to, you know, money so that I can invest in bigger stories. And, uh, there, there is a separation between right now money, which is what you were talking about, Andrew, where it's like you took a less than perfect deal for right now money, uh, uh versus down the road money, which is, you know, obviously, uh, you know, where you retain movie rights and so on. Well, which one do you want? Uh, well, both. Uh, uh, then what are you again, waiting for? Then, uh, what, then what are you waiting for? Uh, er, Monday, er. when World's Greatest Con launches on all podcasting platforms. Two episodes, two hours of World's Greatest Con. Use the ACAS website from here on out. We're not on Fireside anymore. It's, uh, I don't know uh, that. Have you fixed your website, by the way? Uh, I tried to send somebody there to listen to your podcast. And it just went straight to like a fireside. Yeah, the fireside is still the. Oh, you oh, mean the URL? Oh no, no, he means politics, yeah. politics, politics. Yeah, if you go to politics, politics, politics yeah, com, just... it goes to the right website now. Yes. It does. Okay, it didn't yes. work yesterday. Right. Um. Oh well, try unless unless I. It, it, that's uh, an after things thing. Yeah, the, check your SEO because that fireside one is still the very top one. This Acast one is not even like number it, two. And it and it does take a while for like a uh, URL stuff to propagate, so that makes sense, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, 100 hours, people. Listen, uh, it's the best story. Uh, would, would, would this be overhyping it, Justin, to say that this is the single best? This is our Citizen Kane. Uh, I oh. mean, uh, I don't even know that that's an exaggeration. It's, it's the single best. It. All right, no, it looks like the link is not corrected on politics, politics, politics. Sorry. Uh, wanna, what, were you, what were you saying, Brian? I was saying this is a very good tale that we've told and we are as often happens in the last few minutes before launch trying to figure out exactly like uh, the moment we end this justin and i begin a a a part by part reexamination of the content itself to make sure that there's not one pronoun that it's not clear who we're talking about to you know, to evaluate whether or not this phrase could have been said better or whatever. And then passing that, we're going to uh, figure out the messaging that there will be a moment in these first two episodes where we're going to have to say, hey, normally an ad goes here and we'll have to have a, uh, we'll have to figure out our plan. But, but th this is all part of it. Uh, when you have good story, good story is not enough. And, and that's something that we've hammered on on this podcast for a decade now is good stories, not enough uh, good stories. And you have to be able to launch it in a tactically advantageous kind of way. Cool. Monday, <laughs> Monday, Monday is when the podcast comes out. Everybody download it. Subscribe to world's greatest con right now. There we go. Uh, well, I know what my pick is. WGC, baby. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's greatest con, everybody. Uh, I'm super excited. Uh, I think that stepping back from the dirty business side of it all, it in is, the moment, it is. Yeah, what 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 you guys have done, what you put together, is just amazing. It is just fantastic to see kind of all cylinders firing and the kind of stuff that you can do. And I, yeah, this is the way you've gone about this, the way you approach this. You should have a Netflix series. You should have everything. You should have a movie deal. All of that. 
If, so. if we're talking about the story, whoo, there was some, there was some tricky negotiations. Uh, hat, hats off to everybody. A negotiation. Yeah. But I mean, about, even, but I mean, the oh, machine uh, you guys uh, have uh, built. navigation, some tricky navigation to there are a lot Navigating of, a lot of stone needles we had to thread and it sounds like everybody loves how we did it. Uh, anything more would be detail specific. Yeah, but, and, and the machine you guys have built. I mean, it's great. You guys have built like, and and it, it's it sucks to be stuck into the you know the weeds of where, you know the, that the, you know the financial aspect of it, but stepping back and what you've done, and I, I'd say that you know the, the biggest gains I've ever had were things that I tried for and kind of felt like I missed years before, and then later on it kind of formed a pattern and people picked up on it. Yeah, the FBI. And I'm going to jail. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, gentlemen, it's been after. Hey, that's a show, everybody. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on a Friday or a Monday or whatever day it is. <laughs> uh, we'll be back uh, on Monday with some more cord killing. Uh, Tuesday, we got a special guest on the show. Tuesday, that'll be fun. Yeah, Allie Gertz is on the show. Oh. Really? Yeah. Wonderful. Cool. Yeah. So check that out. She's got a Kickstarter just about done, I think. Uh, so yeah, we're going to see if she can we can push her over the top to do a full Nine Inch Nails cover album. That's what it's uh, it's all about. Right. Um, Heck yes. Which, considering her other inspirations, we can only ask why she would want to <laughs> curse Trent Reznor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching us. Bye.